to school because of my job. And uh, so it's been a journey for me. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a real challenge. Uh, just with the whole, uh, the technical things of it. Uh, just learning a lot of new things that are in new realms that I've not known before. Also, the, uh, the workload uh, has been great. Just the comprehension of so much stuff. And uh, then the, uh, just the writing and getting it right. And just, it's helped a lot. But I, I was appreciative. Um, I've been praying, I know the folks have said they've been praying for me as well. And my class was right in the middle of Saturday afternoon, which, you know, for me, I have one day a week that I have time that I can schedule and do things that need to be done. The rest of the week is scheduled out for me. I have a very good life, but just, and so uh, to make a very long story short, um, I, I said to um, my, my uh, supervisor teacher that can we move this early in the day? I was able to present that, um, my need, or my want, and what would work better. And so, uh, to make a very long story short, not only did God move it early in the day, but God moved it completely off of Saturday nights, Thursday evenings, 8 to, 8 to 10. Amen. So, I, I thank God for answer prayer. That, that just seemed like a huge burden relief from my shoulder. Not that that's a great time, but it sure is better than the other times. So uh, I thank God for that. And so just want to report to you uh, just about what God is doing for me. It may seem small and simple, but it was a needful thing. Ain't too bad in the middle of January, but come April, May, and June, I ain't going to like being spending all my Saturdays cooped up in a room. Amen. So uh, just uh, appreciate that. Amen. Let me find myself on my notes here. Turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter number 1 and verse number 12. John chapter number 1 verse number 12. This may seem more like a Bible study. Uh, I, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know how the outcomes of everything is going to be. I know what my intent is. Um, but it kind of looks like a Bible study to me. But I pray that it will be preaching from the Word of God. Most of all, I pray that it will be gaining an understanding from God's Word for you. And so in John chapter number uh, uh, 1 and verse number 12, the Word of God says, But as many as received Him, to them gave He powers to be, power to become the sons of God. Amen. Even to them who believe on His name. But as many as received him, uh, because some did not receive him, but, 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 but some do receive him. And to those who receive him, amen, as being Christ, the Son of God. As many as received him, the Bible says, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Amen. Uh, I believe that this is a great promise that if we will receive Him, our identity of who we are is a son of God, a daughter of God. Amen. Even to them that believe on His name. Amen. The name of Jesus. Amen. And what that name means, that He is able to save His people from their sins. You think of who you are tonight. Amen. Many of you can identify yourself as a child. You look at your father, whether he is living or whether he is deceased, and you are still identified as a son or a daughter because of your surname. Even if it's just your maiden name, it is still who you are because of your surname. It identifies you. And I just thought tonight, in a world that is full of, 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 of identification, I, I want to look at this. I want to look at identity tonight. I want to look at identity and what that means. Identity. What does it mean to us as believers as we are identified in Christ? We are son or daughter of Christ. We've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Uh, we're not of this world, but we are part of the group that has received Him. Amen. Received Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord because we believe in the work that took place upon the cross of Calvary. Amen. A duty is this. This is it in definition. The fact of being who or what a person or a thing is. The fact of being who or what a person or thing is. Uh, listen to this in, in the definition. Uh, the, the, the eventual discovery, the discovered, uh, the, they eventually discovered their identity uh, in, 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 in their being. Amen. Uh, their recognition, uh, uh, their distinguishment, uh, their discerning, they recognize who they are. Uh, identity can also mean this. It can mean a close similarity to something. The sameness, oneness, or congruence. I feel like both of these terms are applicable. We'll find them being applicable as we look at our identity, who we are. Uh, we, we hear this word a lot. If, if you read the news, if, you, if, if you're staying abreast of where we are as a culture, we are at a place where people want to know their identity. Everybody wants their story to be heard. Everybody wants to be identified for who or what they uh, feel that they are. Amen. And so when we look at identity, it's the feeling of, of belonging to a group. Uh, nationality, ethnicity, religion, uh, uh, social class, a uh, 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 generation even is our, our identifier, what, a gener what, what generation we identify with, amen. And so what, what do people do for their identity? How are they identified? And so uh, this evening, think about that. How do you identify yourself? And what is your identity? And what do you do to, uh, to, to, to best display your identity or understand who you are and where you want to be identified? Are you with me tonight? Some of you are identified as, as a son, a daughter, a husband, a wife, a dad, a grandfather. Uh, you're, you're identified. Well, 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 hang on. We'll get there. And so what are things people do? Uh, people are identified through their location, just simply where they live. They're, they are identified by that. Uh, they're identified through their hobbies or, or whatever gives them a, a, a sense of significance or self-worth is how people are identified. People will say, I am blank on this religion or on this philosophy because they identify themselves with a particular group of people. And that's how they want to be identified. And so identity, it's, it's interesting to me. Amen. The normal life can also be an identity. Some people say, well, I'm just a, I, 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 I'm just a teacher. I'm just a nurse. I'm just, I, I'm just a, 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 a mechanic. I'm just a, a, whatever it is. I, I feel like I, I go through my life and I live the normalcy of life. But in the normalcy of life, that is how they want to be identified. That is their identifier. And so uh, uh, when we look, people uh, identify themselves by, by the way they look. They diet. They exercise. Uh, they can be identified by the color of their hair. You talk to someone that has uh, fluorescent uh, orange hair, and, and, and what do they say? I just want to be different. They're trying to make an identity for themselves. I deal with people a lot that I see tattoos. And what's the story behind your tattoo? I just want to have something different. This means this. This is different. Uh, because it's an identity. And so uh, some people are identified by, 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 by the brands that they wear. Uh, I wrote this down. Studies have shown that some people wear a, a particular name of clothing uh, because it is an aesthetic to, to seek uh, after uh, the trends. Uh, generic brands at a bargain price, they feel, give them an attitude of less self-worth. So sometimes people identify themselves by, by the brand that they they wear it and what that represents. They identify themselves by clubs and organizations and, and pursuits of luxuries, amen, in their life, items that make them feel like they have self-worth. Their homes, their vehicles, whatever they have, identifiers. You know, the world is looking to find identity. 
all these things. But I need to tell you, God's design for us was to have a commonality of contentment in our lives through doing His perfect will. Can I say that again? The identities that everybody wants to be. Some have some really mixed up identities. <laughs> I'm not even going to die about that one tonight. Lots of mixed up identities in the world. But one thing that is for sure, the world's identities are mixed up. But God has come to give us an identity that is different than the world. The world has a commonality of an identity. It is birthed in that of sin and the sin nature that all falls because of one man's sin. And so identity is all rooted in a very sinful, self-focused nature. Amen. But when God gives us an identity of who we are, amen, our identity is defined by the commitment that we make to Him. Amen. That we live our lives through His perfect will. And now we are are identified in and through Jesus Christ because He has become our identifier. Amen. Tonight, how are you identified? Amen. Are you still struggling? Amen. Or have you found your identity in the cross of Christ? Amen. In a life that is lived after Jesus Christ living in Him. Amen. It's easy for believers to lose sight of who they are. Amen. Easy to lose sight that we're bought by the blood. The Bible says in the scripture that I read, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. How did he do that? Amen. Because he died upon the cross. He, he not only died, but he rose from the grave. Amen. And he ever lives. He is our identifier because of the work that he did. Amen. We can be identified with him. An identity that's separate from the world. An identity that we were meant to be found in from the very beginning of time, which was lost the fall of man. Amen. Our identifier. Amen. I want you to realize that in every culture there are uh, uh, identities. And if we're not careful, we need to realize our bias to that. Amen. And God help us get over any of our biases. Amen. And to love people as Christ loves people. But even in cultures, there are subcultures of how things transpire and happen. Amen. But in the world, there is one culture. Even in many subcultures, there is the root of that one culture and that one identity. And it's sin. Amen. But we need to realize that our identity as we live in this world is we are identified by a dual citizenship. Amen. That we're a citizen of earth, but we are also a citizen of heaven. Amen. And when we feel that our, 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 our identity is heavenly, amen, it begins to crush our earthly identity. It doesn't matter how we look or what we have on this earth. Amen. All that matters is that we're identified by a heavenly purpose. Amen. That we're identified Identified by where our treasure is. We're identified by the one who loved us and gave us life and continues to give us life and give us direction. Amen. Identity. What's your identity tonight? Amen. We will spend a lifetime scrutinizing how we will prioritize values in our life because of our commitment to follow Christ. Amen. Think about this. We will spend our lifetime scrutinizing our identity because of our following Christ. We will spend time finding affirmation to the way that we're living if we're living for Christ. Christ affirms that I'm living this way. This is honorable to God. Amen. Sometimes as we scrutinize, we'll say, wait, I'm off the mark. I've got to modify some things in my life. Amen. This doesn't identify who I am in Christ and what Christ wants me to be. My identifier is Him. So I've got to modify. And then there's times in our life as we're scrutinizing our life and our identity, we say, I reject that. That is contrary to the will of God. 
God and the Word of God. This is not God's design and plan for my life. We need to look and see ourselves as Christ sees us, bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, forgiven of our sins. Amen. Now we live with a fruitful life, a fruitful life that comes through the Spirit of God. And we love God and we love people more than anything else. So that becomes our identifier. Paul said this. He said often. He said in Christ. He identified himself in Christ. He identified those that he's writing epistles to in Christ. Amen. So when we think about what that is, let's think about that. If our identity is in Christ, what does that mean to us? Amen. There's a balance to all this. Amen. There there can be preaching that can get the balance of all this off. Amen. But if we are living our identity in Christ, amen, uh, uh, we we need to realize that, that, that there's a balance to everything that we do. I forgot to write a scripture down I wanted to read. Amen. Let me read before I move any farther. Let me read. From Romans chapter number 5, verse number 12. I'm going to read on down a bit. Romans 5, verse number 12. It says, Wherefore, as one man sin entered into the world by Adam, and death by sin. Amen. Do you realize that our identity in Adam, if we live our life without Jesus Christ, our identity is only in Adam, and we identify that we're going to die physically, but we also identify that we're going to die spiritually. Because that's what's inherited from Adam. That's our identity if we don't know Christ. Amen. And and death by sin. And and, and death passed upon all men. Because everyone's in Adam. For all have sinned until the law. Sin was in the world. But sin is uh, uh, not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. We may have not done the same things Adam did or Adam's children did. Amen. But we still are marked by sin because our identity was in the first Adam. Who is the figure of him who is to come. But yet there's hope. It's not just the first Adam. But God's going to send a second Adam. Amen. It's going to be Jesus Christ. But not as the offense. uh, So also is, is free the gift. For if though the offense of one, which is Adam, may be dead, much more the grace of God. Have you heard that? Amen. We don't have to be identified through Adam, but we can much more be identified through the grace of God, which is unexhaustible. Amen. In our life, that can be our identity. So you who were once this or that or any of those things that that you want to hide your head in shame, that's not the marker. That's not your identity. You're identified by the grace of Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. Amen. Have you found your identity in Him? Or are you still running down some rabbit trail? Amen. Trying to find some social economic status. Amen. Some label, some brand, some type of identifier. Amen. For who you are. Find your identity in Christ. Amen. Amen. That should be our identity. Amen. The, the, the one identifier in all cultures and all subcultures is sin. But the only difference that we can have from that identity is through Christ. And for as many that accept Him and believe, to them give He power to become the sons of God. An identifier. And not as much as it was by one who sinned so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Amen. I'm going to encourage you to read that chapter, but I've been moving on for the sake of time. So our identifier is with Christ. Amen. Our identity is found in Him. I want to ask you, when we think about our identity with Christ, if we are identifying with Him, First thing we got to do is we got to die with him. Christ died, didn't he? Amen. We know 
We know what happened, amen, on Golgotha's hill. He died, amen. If we're going to identify with him, we've got to take up our cross and follow after him. We've got to die to self, to the old nature, to the old identity, and we've got to find identity with Christ in newness of life, amen. And we say, wait, I'm not placing myself any longer under the headship and the leadership of Adam, but I've switched identity. I'm placing myself under the headship of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm different in nature. And my whole attitude toward everything is different because I'm not identified with Adam. I'm identified with Christ. I've died. I've died to self. I want to ask you this. If you were to take inventory of everything of your life tonight, amen, what is the most important thing to you? If you were to write it down on a piece of paper, all those things are important, and you number them, what is it that you put your affections upon? Amen. The Bible says that where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. Amen. I want to ask you, what is the treasure in your heart and life? Amen. What is the legacy that you desire that if God should tarry, you leave behind to someone else. Amen. I pray that it's more than money or materialistic things. I pray that you grab hold of something that will be more valuable and treasurable. Amen. Than just the mere material things of this life. I want to ask, I want to challenge, I didn't have this in my notes. I want to challenge you. Are you a person who has really found your identity and who you are and you're settled with it? I want to ask you that. I'm challenging everyone in here the same that I want to challenge myself. Do we know our identity in Christ? And if so, are we confident enough in our identity that we can, we can move throughout life forward, laterally, wherever God makes it for us, that we can speak life and encouragement and to every person that we come in contact with. Jesus rebuked. I know he turned the tables over in the temple, but I also find him in his life speaking life into people. The woman at the well. I find him, the woman who was a Seraphonician woman, speaking life. The man of the Gadarenes who was naked and crazy and no one wanted to be around him. You know how to speak life. The identity of Christ causes us to confront things in love, but it also causes us to speak life into other people. Speaking life into other people doesn't take away from our prestige or our identity. It simply shows that we found our identity in Christ. <laughs> because we've died to Christ. We've died to ourselves. Amen. I, 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 I hope that tonight that we can say that we found our identity in Christ. And understanding our identity in Christ is critical for a fruit, fruitful walk with the Lord. Because not only do we die with Him, but we live with Him. Fruit is given on a tree that is alive and producing and productive. So if we are going to live with Christ, amen, we first have died with Him. My apple trees are dead in my yard right now. But I'm believing in spring, amen, because when life is spoke from God, amen, they're going to produce. Amen. When God allows us to die with Him, He also gives us life with Him. And there's fruit that we begin to produce in our life. And it is our identity. It is love. It's joy. It's peace. It's on suffering. Amen. All the fruits of the Spirit are now uh, produced in our life because it is our identifier. The world is shoving and pushing and not loving. And there's division like we've never seen before. Do you know why? Because the world's identity is in sin. It's time the church rises up with an identity and says, we don't identify with that. Amen. We identify, amen, with the grace and love that God has. Amen. I stand for righteousness. I stand against your sin. But I love you and I believe that God's able to help you the same way that He helped me. Amen. It's our identity. Dying with Christ means dying to things that used to run our lives. You know, the material wealth, the, the central motivation in many of our lives. Christ calls us to relinquish 
the pursuit of things that are ungodly. May I ask you, if I were to ask you, reflect over your week. What was your core motivation? What motivated you this week? What were you pursuing? Would you be able to say, I was pursuing the identity of Christ? I asked myself that. It's inventory check time. What was my core motivation? God, help it be that I was pursuing my identity in Christ. Because I'm dying with Him. And I'm living with Him. Everything about life is living. You know, in my mind, in my 20s, I got this picture of who Christ was that was different. I've carried it for several years now. Do you ever notice children, they love, they're drawn to people who love them and are happy and smile. Children are scrappy. They don't like grumpy people. Oh, they look scary, intimidating. But the children came to Christ. Suffer the little children. If we're identifying with Christ, I believe we're identifying with happiness and joy. Because the core of our motivation is we're not under the headship of Adam anymore. But Christ is our headship. I hope tonight's message has made sense to you. How are you identified? Beyond being male or female. Beyond being Anglo, beyond being your profession, our grace to identify our life should be the pursuit of Christ and living with Him. Self centered people never leave a legacy behind. If your legacy were written tonight, what would you leave behind? Where would you be going? Would your legacy say, man, that person, they loved heaven and it crushed all of our motivations. They are Christ-centered and everything about them, they wanted their life to be identified by Christ. I'm not saying there are things that are wrong in our pursuits of life achieving and gain. If you're taking that away tonight, then you've totally misconstrued my message. If you drop a, a Cadillac Escalade, I will look and admire it. Bless your heart. God bless you that he gave you that. But if your motivation has been only to drive that Cadillac Escalade, then your identifier is going to be If I wanted to wear the best suit in the building, the fanciest, brightest ties, because I do like bright ties. <laughs> but if that's my motivator over Christ, who cares what the album's like? I have missed the motivation of the identity of Christ. You can live in the best, best area of Upper Health, and you can live in the prettiest cul-de-sac in town. But if your motivation is for that only, then you're still living under the head of Adam. But if you haven't been motivated for Christ, and he's exalted you to that cul-de-sac, what a sweet place to live, because your identifier is not that. I simply want to ask you tonight, what is your identity? Can we come and take evaluation on the altar tonight? Amen. Mr. Beth, you're going to come to the piano. Let's come. Let's find our identity in Christ.